Guys, today I'm joined with Gamal Yafai, he's a former GB star, now he's a professional boxer, Commonwealth champion, he's on to bigger things. Um, so Gamal, how you doing? You alright mate? Yeah, good man, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, so what got you into boxing, Gamal? Um, Prince Hassan. Did it? Yeah, yeah. You know what, to be honest with you, I think, um, I don't know, like Kyle, Kyle was into yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle Yafai's brother, former world champion. Um, obviously he was into uh, Prince Hassan a lot. Yeah. yeah. How did you admire it? Did you just watch him one day? Um, yeah, we used to stay up and watch his fights. Um, yeah. I remember me and Carl staying up late to like four in the morning yeah. to, and begging my mum to um, get the pay-per-views. Um, but yeah, man, I used to, I used to love Naz. Um, yeah. That's who got me into boxing, really. I remember being on holiday in Spain. Yeah. Um, when I was about, about seven, eight, and I said to my mum, uh, my mum said to him, what do you want for your birthday? Yeah. And I said, yeah, hey, just take me to a boxing gym. And then, she took me to a boxing gym, Sully, up in um, Sully. Yeah, um, Sully on boxing gym uh, now. There's an old fella, I can't remember his name. Uh, Roy and Harry run it. Yeah, Roy yeah. Roy and Harry, and um, yeah, so. I think he was old for you. He was young when you started that. Yeah, yeah, I was young then. I must have been about, probably about eight. You know, it's funny saying that because I remember going down Sully on boxing gym, and I remember Cal was there and he yeah. had the actual Nassim style haircut yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't he? He had the Nassim style, he had the, <laughs> he had the leopard the, uh, the shorts yeah, yeah, yeah. and he used to even box style yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had his hands down like that. We'll try to box style. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't think that but um, I, remember, I remember those days um, with obviously Cal and then obviously did you move from Solio Gym yeah. to? Yeah so basically we started off at Solio Boxing Gym, oh, I did and then I said to Cal and saying to him, come to the boxing gym, and he was not on it, he, was, he didn't really. Cal wasn't really boxing, like we watched boxing, but he never really loved it like that. Yeah. Um, I, used to just, I used to always love to fight, and that little yeah, tear away. Yeah, um, yeah. And then uh, he, he said, nah, nah, it ain't for me. And then I asked him a couple of months later, and he yeah. ended up coming. Okay. And then when he, when he come, he just loved it then. And then uh, Cal lost like his first 13, so 13 fights. Yeah. 13, I think he had 13 fights, lost like 10 or something stupid like that. Yeah, um, yeah. It was just time for him to move on, so we went to Franco Sullivan, and then literally from then, that made him coward. Frank, Franco Sullivan is the best trainer I've ever worked with. Um, yeah. he's, uh, he just changed the game for Cal. Cal won every national title, won Buck for England, done everything. Yeah. But before that, I mean, as I remember, you lost a few of his amateur yeah, fights, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So it just proves if you're young and you, you know, you have a loss in amateur career. Oh, it's mine. Yeah, it's mine, man. Losing amateurs, bloody hell. Yeah. I, I, I lost a few when I first started off, and then yeah. ended up to winning, the, you know, the national titles a good few times, becoming one of the youngest ever senior ABA champions. That's only 17. Um, you know, and ABCs. How did that? How did that feel for you winning the ABA title? Obviously, I mean, Cal, did Cal win? Cal, 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 Cal won it. Cal was Cal was the youngest to ever win on Cal was at seventeen. He just turned seventeen, and um, but then I, I become like second or third. I won it when I was seventeen as well. So, do you just think without obviously? Do you think Frank was a massive help for you to accelerate yeah. to winning the national title? Was just one hundred percent. Like with, with Frank, um, we'd we'd he changed the game for us really. Especially Cal, um, Cal just become a, 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 you know, really a novice yeah. to a world class amateur. Um, he, he won the world championships, world um, juniors when he was 16, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, he, 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 Cal was just, um, he just went from an overnight sensation kind of thing oh, in yeah, the amateurs. Um, I mean, I think, look, like, obviously I've got brothers and they're very competitive. Obviously my brothers like used to box and stuff, you know, but. Having seen like Cal box and him do so well, surely that must have been something like very motivational for yourself. Yeah, yeah very, very like, very, like it's mad because I'd won a few national titles and um, Cal had boxed in the World Juniors. He got to the, f he won, he won a, up in uh, in Liverpool, and uh, I never forget the day. I was me and my mum and um, me, me and my mum and my little brother Galau yeah. was um, at the Adelphi Old Town in Liverpool waiting yeah. for Cal. Cow just won the gold, he'd gone up to have a shower. Okay. And then um, we were sitting downstairs waiting for him and the GB coaches were 
were there as well. And they, they, we got chatting and they said, is this you next? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. I was like, because I was, I was kind of like emotional on that. <laughs> like, a young kid, my brother just won a world championship. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, is this you next? And I was just like, yeah, man. I was like, I want to get on GB. I want to, you know, go to World Junior. I want to do all that. You know what's so good, like? Between you brothers, you've got such wicked banter as well. Yeah. Always see Caroline going, you know, taking the piss out of you, taking yeah. the piss out of you. Yeah, all the time, <laughs> it's man. It's funny, but isn't it? And you need that because, you know, with boxing, you can't be too serious. You need to switch off. You need yeah, to have a yeah. laugh. Yeah. You need to relax. And that's what Mamad used to do all the time. He used oh. to play PlayStation and chill out in his change room before he used to fight. See, see boxing, I love boxing and that, but, you know, you do it, definitely have to switch off on me. It's, um, it's too much on time. Yeah, so you know, like, boxing, like, really sit late without boxing I'll be you know nothing so 100%. I mean I remember like when I used to box with Frank myself and then uh, I was I was training with Galal as well yeah. and I think Galal was a novice Galal had yeah. about yeah. three four fights yeah. and we're speaking about Cal saying you know Cal's doing really well and he goes yeah he's smashing it my brother's doing really good and he's always looking to wanting to get there but then yeah. you know because he had obviously Cal and himself doing good he, he just smashed it he won the national titles yeah. and, you know, he's boxing for GB, Olympic, he's an Olympian. Yeah, Olympian, yeah. Two time Olympian. Two time Olympian, obviously. He would have been going to the Olympics, qualified uh, again, didn't he? He qualified, he beat the um, number one Russian, who's very good. Um, yeah. So he qualified, he beat him for the qualify to qualify. Yeah. Um, obviously, the coronavirus. Yeah. So basically, he was in. He, he won the quarterfinals. Yeah. He was the only one, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the. And McGrail. Oh, yeah. McGrail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um. Yeah. He's boxing the Russian, but the Russian was the best kid in the. He, he, Galal was the best kid, but the Russian was the second best. So Galal was, Galal was to beat the Russian yeah, yeah. and qualify. Yeah. Realistically, he was going to go and win the gold, but then yeah. um, obviously Rob McCracken said to him, "Listen, this will be your last fight. This will the qualifying fight because the coronavirus they're going to stop the tournament." Yeah. So um, Galal was just like, "All right, that's sweet." He just yeah. his yeah. goal was just to qualify realistically, um, and he beat the Russian pretty easily, qualified. You know, obviously, say Robin McCracken, a very good friend of mine is, um, you know, Spencer, Spencer, Spencer McCracken. McCracken. Yeah. He's yeah. a very, very close friend of mine. Yeah. Um, and, you know, having his father and his brothers do really good, yeah. um, obviously, they accelerated. I mean, how is it like knowing that? Obviously, because before you, you brothers, it was yeah. Robbie and it was Spencer, and, yeah, yeah. and obviously, did they help you? Like, I mean, Robbie. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I never. I never knew much about her um, until, obviously, I was, when I was at Frank's, it was only to the latter part of my, while I was at Frank's that I got to know about her, yeah. um, Robin, and, um, and then my, my brother was on the podium, okay. on the podium squad, and then Rob became um, the, the head coach of the, the podium, I was on the development, because I was just a bit younger, quite yeah. a bit younger, so I was just coming through, yeah. and then um, Rob used to drop my brother home from yeah, yeah. Sheffield, yeah. and then, um, Seen him a few times, with lovely geese, and basically they just said like, if you win the senior NBA's, because I was due to go and see senior NBA's, if you win the senior NBA's, then you will be the next one to um, join the um, ju uh, senior, the, the, the podium. So obviously I won the senior NBA's, um, but the, <laughs> I was I won the senior NBA's at 51 kilos, and my brother was the number one at 51 kilos, <laughs> the uh, podium. So all the brother was gonna go to school, yeah. boy. <laughs> so I was like. Kind of, um, Rob just said to me, yeah. uh, I got on the podium, yeah. and it, the, the, this, I was kind of big 51, and he just said, do you fancy moving up to 54? Yeah. And I was growing, I was only young, just like, yeah, so I moved up to 54. Okay. And um, yeah, went to went to a few major tournaments, won European medals, um, won, won a, a good few tournaments for, um, for GB. Uh, I, mean, I, I love GB, I love being on there. It got a bit boring at the end, to, towards the end, but it's time for me to move on. And you had a good stable on the GB. You yeah. had obviously the likes of Anthony Joshua, yeah. um, you know, Anthony Fadda, some, some top some boys, top kids, yeah, some yeah. top kids. And I'm at, at the end saying, uh, I think we were signing you, I think you are yeah. saying that uh, Gamay Fai, you know, you can punch the hardest on the GB. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and they said when you used to go on the bag, you used to hear the bags. Yeah. And you used to be yourself, pound for pound, you was the yeah, hardest yeah. puncher. So. Yeah. So that's a big one, so AJ will watch it. No, no, no. But we, we used to do testing, and we used to do a lot of testing on the GB. Yeah. The test is, you know, mm. you, you, how strong you are, and whatever. And, you know, like not being big at <laughs> They were um, me and uh, Andy Joshua, Cal, and Cal, who's, yeah. um, you know, the, the strongest lads, Andy Fowler as well. Um, but 
don't mean anything, just being strong, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but um, it's, nah, it, it helped, it's helped me a lot, you know what I mean? Um, so how's your professional transgender been? Like, well, it it's started off well, you know, very good, but then obviously um, I, t- I, took the lo- I took a loss and then I had a lot of injuries. I've had, I've had a nightmare of injuries. Um, so, yeah, but now I'm managed to fight for the European title. Um, I'm just waiting on a day now. Hopefully, Eddie, I can get it in the UK. Yeah. Um, and then just kick on from there. Kick on from there, yeah. I mean, so with yourself, I mean, what in your category now that you're in, yeah. in, in the boxing professional game, is there anyone that you got your eyes on in Britain, or do you look past Britain and want to go on to European and world? Well, well I'm, I'm meant to the European. Um, mm. Hopefully, I, I can win that, and then I can look on, you know, to push on better things, push on to better things. But yeah, you do look at the kids at um, my weight over here, but mm. really, see, they're with other um, promoters and so on, so it's really, see, it's never going to happen. So I don't really look into it too much. That, and, um, you know, just, just look, I just control myself mainly. I don't really control what's, anyone. What's the difference between the amateur training and the professional training now for yourself? Um, well, it's just a lot long. It's just a lot longer. You know, you got to pay yourself a bit more. Um, amateur boxing is just you know, twenty on the go from the yeah. get go. Boom, boom. You don't know when you're fighting. You have to yeah, be fit all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You're not. Yeah, and, and as a pro as well. Yeah, you have to be. You know, you have to be. I train all the time, realistically, even if I'm not fighting. So, even I might have a week off here and there if I'm not, fo- if I'm not fighting. But it, I'll make sure, even if I'm not fighting, I'll always be doing something. Do you think your amateur pedigree help you to be the professional you are now? Because the reason why I say this is a lot of boxers who tend to rush becoming a professional. Yeah. Um, I, in my opinion, I think you should take your time yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, 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 it does help 100%. Anyone that would told you, told you if it would be lying, you know what I mean? But don't get me wrong, don't think just because you haven't had the greatest amateur career, you can't have the greatest professional career, you know what I mean? Because I've seen, I've seen it for myself, kids that who have done, you know, very minimal as amateur. I've seen them as amateurs and they've, been, and, and they've gone pro and I thought, bloody hell, mate, you should just chill for a bit, stay amateur, you weren't yeah. really the, you know, the, yeah. the best amateur. But, you know, they're moulded to these good pros, decent pros, so, and it's it's happened a lot of times. They say it's a different game, isn't it, professional? Yeah, it's, uh, what, what I do think... It's like a punch in the face, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> with little gloves. <laughs> um, now, it's a, it's a totally different game, 100%, but yeah. I, I just feel like if you get 10 top amateurs mm. and you get 10 not-so-top amateurs, mm. more, more, more time than 10 top amateurs are going to go on and do better as a professional. Mm. That's... that's that, that's you know no, it is, yeah, exactly. com- common sense. Um, but yeah, um, don't don't feel like just because you didn't have the greatest amateur career. Yeah. Or you got to remember, kids want to go to the Olympics and bot for GB and mm. do all this. You've got to be very good to do all that kind of stuff. What What would you say is your biggest motivation in boxing at the minute? Or what's, what's my, my biggest motivation? Yeah. In terms of what you're aiming for. Oh, what I'm aiming for. Yeah. What I'm aiming for is world title. You know what I mean, like. Yeah. I've always said it, and I'm, I'm not a deluded kid, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, I know how this game works, yeah, and, yeah. but I feel like I'm good enough to be a, be a world champion. I've just got to get it out of me, and I will. Before before my career ends, I will be a world, I will be a world champion. And I'll always feel like if, 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 if that in the case, then I've kind of failed, really. I've always, I've always said it, like, if you're not in the professional boxing to have admiration to become a world champion yeah and really I, don't, I, don't I, I, know, I know what you're saying yeah i understand what you're saying but you gotta think um you gotta be realistic you can't be delusional yeah, 100%. Um, there's a lot of there's, there's if, if you're like I say if you're coming from gb mm. and you're you know you, you next met you sign from that room you know you, you got eddie and promoting yeah, you you should really still looking to win world titles you know you've done well as an amateur you know, you should be thinking, you know, I can if I'm if I'm a top amateur, world class amateur, I can be a world class pro. And I'd be looking at that, yeah. But I do understand you gotta take it you gotta be looking at being the you know winning uh, Commonwealth titles, British titles, European titles and then looking at world you can't just be looking have your always just yeah, on the world titles yeah. straight away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you come up too short, you you rush. It's like it's like your kids like um, I don't know, uh, for example, he's a, 
box for GB, Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist. Um, he can't go in a box of world champions now. No. You know what I mean, he can't. But before we put, before we put, you know, before he hangs the gloves off, he can have a TV world champion. You know what I mean? Um, but it's just you got to take your time. You got you can't rush. You got to have your goal. You got to set your goals, and finally, you know, the last one will be world champion, mm. and then unifying and whatever. Um, but you know, you don't. In my opinion, like, obviously, you don't know about yourself. You've been with the GB squad. You don't need nothing too special. I mean, look at like Cam Smith, Anthony Joshua, all yeah. them guys. They don't do nothing special. But they're yeah. just good at doing the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, work the, hard. The, 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 the thing is with Cam Smith. It, the thing is with these type of kids. I, I, like, I know what you're saying, mm. but I've been around. I've been around the world with them, mm. and 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 you look at them. They look. They can do the basics very good. Yeah. Mm. But you you look at them and you don't think. I don't know. It's like it's like. This is a good example, Lemachenko on the weekend, yeah? yeah? yeah. Lemachenko. Yeah. If you watch Lopez and you watch Lemachenko, yeah. you think, bloody hell, Le Lemachenko, let me tell you, yeah. I've, se I I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. In all my life, I've watched Hearn, watched Leonard, watched Duran, watched... Have you ever watched him live? Because he was in the amateurs, he fought some... I've seen, yeah, yeah, I've seen him live as well, but, uh, Lemachenko, and I've never seen anything like it. In all my life, I've never seen anything, you know, any... Like, I've never... When he boxed Luke Campbell, when he boxed, he boxed um, who else did he box? Um, uh, obviously, that, I didn't watch him live then when he boxed Russell, Gary Russell, but the way he just, just beats these kids easy, and I've never seen anything like it, anyway. And yeah. he's got, we recently, he got beat by Lopez fair, and... What was your opinion of that fight? I, th I, thought, I, thought, he, I thought Lopez won pretty, pretty easy, I did. Yeah, I, I, I thought I, that as well. People who have draws, and I'm like, what were you watching? Like, <laughs> seriously, I didn't... A lot of people say it's first, a draw, first five, it. six rounds he won. Yeah. Then, then, then he lost like seven, seven, eight. He might, he might have lost seven, eight, and I can't remember. But then I remember, remember him losing a few in the latter part, and then I remember him the second round, the t the twelfth round, the final round, just, just you know, needed hurting Lemachenko and that. And uh, th that, that's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Lemachenko does a lot better things than. Lopez, yeah, does. he does it. I don't care what you say. There's a lot better things than him. He's yeah. the most skilled fight, but better skilled, mm. better everything, but yeah. except power. But yeah. he's he's beat, he's beat, and he but they'd have a rematch and he'd beat him again. He would, in my opinion. I think, but that's what I'm saying. Callum Smith and Joshua, trust yeah. me, they're a lot yeah. better than what you think. Yeah, you yeah, see them yeah. and you yeah. go, ah, oh, the, the basic Callum Smith don't look a million dollars on the eye, and the Josh don't look a million dollars. Million dollars on the arm, but, but, they're very but good. It, it, true boxing fans, they do. In my in my opinion, they do because how good they're doing yeah, the yeah. basics, how good their jab is, how good they're on their feet. Have you seen Callum Smith? Callum Smith don't. Callum Smith that don't. He is not on his feet, on his toes no, constantly. No, but what he no, does no. is the judgment, just the way the he just comes out, the distant yeah. bump yeah. in out, and that's what. That's you know what? They're two of my favourite punches. You know Callum Smith and your yeah. brother Cal. Yeah. The way they just the way drop the yeah. one, two yeah. feet to the head and bang to the body. But and you know what? I, I, I've I've known Cannon for years, Cannon for years, and, and and I'd be the first to say to him. I think he's unreal. Like yeah. now, now I think he's unreal. Yeah. But even as even as a GB, he was still a top top kid. Don't get me wrong. But I'd never thought he'd go in and do what he's done now. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that, that's a that's a that's a beautiful thing about boxing. Yeah. You see a lot of these kids, and you go, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna. He ain't yeah. gonna he ain't gonna go and win. win. You see, there's a few kids on the GB lad yeah. on the GB squad now. They go pro, and you think they ain't gonna do much and that. Yeah. But trust me. What? You, what <laughs> where go on, sorry. So, same as with Josh Taylor and that. Look at them now. They've gone and done best in their weight. Kind of Smith, the best in the weight in the world. Mm -hmm. Josh Taylor and the Joshua. You know. Um, so. Have you got Joyce or Triple D? Uh, Oh, I don't know, it's a hard one. I like Joyce, man, he was on the squad. I was on the squad with him and that, yeah. so it's a uh, it's yeah. hard one. But I hope Joyce does it. But I, I like that Daniel Dubois, because I remember him on the squad as well. Yeah. Um, I remember him being a nice kid, yeah. being a good kid, always. When I, I, felt, I seen Spar Joshua once, yeah. and I thought, bloody hell, I thought, this kid's, this kid's going to be the next something, the next star. Like. But when he sparred Joshua, he was only young, wasn't he? Yeah, was he was it? young, yeah. And, and like, you know, he, he done well. And he, he, that kid's been eating bricks to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a sister as well. Who's a handful, and she's only young. Oh, yeah, she boxes as well. She's on the she? squad. She's on the GB squad as well. She, she. But but Birmingham have some good kids, man. They, they, yeah, they've got 100%. they've got um, a few GB kids on there. Uh, they obviously, they got Galal. Ben Whitaker. They got Ben Whitaker. They got Niall. Yeah. 
Um, who else? Yeah, that's it, I think. From Birmingham, but the top kids, you know what I mean? And the, the good they good how, how do you find sparring your brothers? What I was going to ask them. I, I, I don't spar. I don't spar with um, my brothers, really. Mm. I do t I do a bit of tech work and that. with Because like, I've seen you down at City, I think, doing a few rounds with Galak. Yeah, it would have been a while ago. That was a while ago, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Sometimes but, it might get heated. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, trust me. Well, that, that, that's a thing. You can't spar with your brothers. You can't, that. can you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it just don't work. Um, but obviously, they're top kids, ain't it? I like spying Galak because he's awkward and he's. Know, he's amateur on your, on your 24-7, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he don't give you no space, that's, just good. that's what we need. Um, so have you got a date, any dates and have you got a well, date fixed? Obvi obviously the kid, the, the European champion is from abroad, so mm. we're trying to, we're trying, Eddie's trying to get it done over here, yeah. trying to make the fight over here, so hopefully we can make it here. But if not, I don't mind going over there, you know what I mean, if, if I have to. Um, either way, there's no fans here anyway, yeah. I mean, um, so... That's it, I mean. There's only me and him in the ring. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Because, I mean, when you box, you don't hear no The, the crowd helps, and that, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, yeah. I'd, I'd like to box here in the UK, you know, the, all the fans would be behind me, yeah. you know what I mean? But, of course. They're not, they're not, they're not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. <laughs> so, it's just, it's just you and me and him in the ring. That's it. And the day, you got to get your job done, and that's it. Yeah. And um, I wanted to do some bag work with Gamal today, like Steve and Shaq did, but Gamal thought he had to spy me, so he kind of flapped it, yeah. <laughs> I'll be back, I'll, don't worry, I'll be back soon, mate. Don't worry, we muggle so, me and yeah, my head guard. Well, hopefully we'll do another interview with Gamal on the pads uh, and the bags um, after his fight. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.